Welcome back. It's the Friday frenzy edition of The Breakfast, and it's time for us to look at the headlines. And we begin with the Punch newspaper, which leads with National Assembly leadership. APC moves to pacify aggrieved aspirants. The writer there, Stop Agitation's party will revisit zoning formula. Adamu begs aspirants. Details of that is on page two of the Punch newspaper. Right on top of the Punch newspaper, you have Buhari Oshubajo governors get 651 million naira hardship allowance. <laughs> you have details of that on page 17. And debt servicing hits $112 million monthly. And that's according to the CBN. Details of that is on page 18 of the Punch newspaper. Okay, that's the much I'll be taking from the Punch newspaper. Okay, um, we move from the Punch to uh, where are we going right now? The Guardian. Okay, we we'll move uh, to the Guardian now. Um, the leading headline there is underutilization debts hobble $4.12 billion rail rehabilitation project. We also have another story here which says National Assembly leadership aspirants adamant despite APC's promise to revisit zoning. Okay, let's reclaim uh, stolen mandate, PDP's lost glory, Atiku Tax Party members. That story uh, is on The Guardian as well. Then we have intrigues, protest as immigration boss gets controversial tenure extension. Nigeria's oil output hits record low as Angola takes the lead. It's also there on the Guardian newspaper. And um, I think that's the much we can take on the Guardian this morning. Okay, okay from the Guardian newspaper, we'll move to Daily Independent. The Daily Independent newspaper is the next one we'll be taking. And it leads with Nigeria's 77 trillion naira debt, calamity of highest proportion. And that's Pengerson. Over there on the front page, you also have Buhari appoints AIG Garba Umar as advisor on security. Page six is where you have details of that appointment. 10th National Assembly, Reps Caucus vows to review APC zoning arrangement, uh, arrangement page 7, is where you find details of that. NIMET alerts on thunderstorm activities in northern states. That will be found on page 7. Supreme Court of Johnson Namdekanu's case to September 14th. Now that's the much I'll be taken from the Daily Independent. Mm. Okay, we'll take the next paper. And uh, the next paper is Daily Trust. Uh, Daily Trust leads with uncertainty over multi billionaire Abuja Airport runway project. And uh, the riders are um, criticisms trail fresh 3.4 billion naira consultancy fee. Stakeholders flay delay in project execution and 65 billion naira budgeted in five years. Another story we have, Northwest deserves the Senate presidency. That is according to Al-Haji Abdulaziz Yari, uh, who is also vying uh, for the position. Uh, National Assembly leadership aspirants, okay, le leadership aspirants not consulted before zoning, Adamu admits. Uh, we also have Dangote refinery to cut fuel import, evils of subsidy shortly, that is Pen Gassen. Tribunal adjourns Atiku APM's motions to May 18. Okay, uh, those are the headlines from Daily Trust newspaper. And those are the four dailies we'll be taking a look at this morning. And we've been joined by our guest, Jide Johnson, senior lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism. He's joining us from Lagos. Good morning, Mr. Jide Johnson. 
Good morning, and it's a pleasure to be with you. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. And thank you for having me. Unfortunately, I couldn't join through visual means. And the power issue is a national problem. Isn't that unfortunate? Would have loved to see your face this morning, <laughs> <laughs> and not just the still picture. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I remember a national event that was had one time uh, in the stadium, and the light went off, and it was like okay. And then there was another one held in Imo State. Uh, the governor was addressing the people, and the light went off <laughs> in government house. You know, okay. if it will be going off only when these people are talking, it will be very good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start with the head, head, uh, the Punch newspaper. And uh, right on top, I, I want to start with this very one that I'm sure every Nigerian would be interested in looking at, and that's Buhari Oshibajo governors get 651 million naira hardship oh, allowance. Uh, you, the hardship they created for Nigerians due to their due to their in, inability to provide critical direction to both the economic, political, and the social life of Nigerians. So if they are, it is a justification of their failure in paying themselves hardship allowance. It shows that they've left untold hardship on Nigeria. But it's unfortunate that we found ourselves where we found ourselves, whereby these people can just allocate whatever money they want to themselves without any any, any scintilla of, 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 of respect for public opinion any for due process and the rest of it. Why will you justify this hardship? Are they going to hardship? They live in government houses to provide them with opportunities to buy whichever car they want to buy for themselves. They live in opulence. Situate this with worth one of the stories we read where a governor allocated two billion naira for himself, his wife, and then um, the deputy as parting gift oh, official cars for themselves. So you begin to wonder, do we even have critical institutions? What is the National Assembly doing? We are the civil society. Um, what we are these accountability institutions that hold government accountable. And what's even the role of the citizenry in all of these things? And I don't know how the citizens are not right by this, and at the same time, they still go ahead to cast their vote for people that are imposed on toll and ship on them. And because they know they can get away with this, they've tried it many times, they keep doing it. What type of can anyone tell me what type of hardship now that you've is the governor about, of my state going through? Yeah, is well, the governor of my state going through? Uh, he's, or they, the hardship they are the collecting on behalf of the people. To, Since they that, are the leaders. That has, gone to, that has just a toothache. He went to England to treat the toothache. You know, let me go on a lighter note. Uh, one of the former senators that's in civil society said the president started his tenure with air problem and is it is ending it with truth problem <laughs> fantastic so he was not able to hear nigerian very well when he started and when he's leaving he's not able to talk to nigerian so it is rather 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 unfortunate because i see no justification for this and i think that there's a need for lawyers civil society lawyers to take class action class actions against against these governors it's because they have been up there. We let the judiciary interpret whether they did indeed have access to this money or not. Let them let this matter be taken to court and be challenged. And if there's there's a rule for them to refund this money, then they have to refund it back to to back 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 to the public coffers because it's it's, it's unbelievable. It's not fifty one million. Yeah, well this brings us back to the issue of the independence of the legislative arm of government. So let's talk about the National Assembly leadership, which uh, is bringing up some really uh, strong questions up in the air. APC moves to pacify aggrieved aspirants. With the rider there, stop agitation, party will revisit zoning formula. That's Adamu Begin aspirant of the APC. Uh, talk to us on this. Without, part, without, without being partisan and stating the facts and stating the ideas, I think when it comes to independence of the legislature, I think at the national level, PDP has worked better than the APC with respect to the independence of, of the legislature from the executive. All, all, all you need to do is just to go back and look at the records. Um, uh, um, compared to what we have, uh, if you compare the 8th Assembly of 
Bukola Seraki? Mr. Seraki with um, the Night Assembly of Lawan that approves that approves anything. All we are talking about death. In all of the stories, you know stories about death. Mm. Everything the president presented before the night assembly, they are food. And APC is trying to make the National Assembly to be a rubber stamp. Now the National Assembly has not been inaugurated. Members have not been inaugurated. And then the party came out and said, okay, we have loaned these offices, the principal offices, to this particular area. Not only did they zone it to particular, they zone it to specific, specific individuals elected in the Senate. And now, what kind of independence do you expect from such from such body? At least, if you want to do that, you can zone you can zone it, and then you continue with your consultation. And in the process of a consultation, you said, okay, within your caucus, you tell your caucus member, this is the person we have nominated, and this is the person we want you to work for. Not for the party to quickly come out and release a statement. I think this is the first time I'm seeing this type of thing. That's never happened in the history of this country before. That the party will just come out and will release a list. Okay, we have zoned these offices and some of we have zoned to this list is to this is to this various individual. And that's why you see that there have been resistance, both at the, the House of Rep level and at the Senate level. You see that I've gone to see two days ago the House of Rep members went to see the national the aspirant for the office of the House of Reverend to see the national chairman. Yesterday, that those of the Senate went to see the national the national chairman. And I think that the party needs to consult wide and the party needs to involve critical stakeholders. There's there's no there's there's no crime in zoning and there's no crime in identifying who you want to take the leadership position. But there are better ways in doing it in democracy, not with a fear. If democracy is based on consultation, is based is, is based on the principle of 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 free and fair processes. So, if you want to do that as a party, you consult those that you need to consult. One, two, just oppose this with the letter the governor, the governor of Ikiti, the governor of Ondo State released some days ago, yeah. questioning the rationale behind the party coming up with the zoning arrangement, and then without getting the governors involved. So. I think that the APC should not start on this note. I think the matter should be revisited. And in revisiting the matter, explain to the critical stakeholders why you have taken the decision. And if there is a need for you to make amendment, you make some amendment. However, I think that is not even the responsibility of the party. By virtue of the constitution, provisions of the constitution, it is members of the National Assembly that will elect their presiding officers. Mm. It is not state. It's just the ground norm. There's no law that says that it must come from the majority. For example, if on the day of the inauguration, the members decide to elect someone from the minority, just like what we have in the night in the eighth assembly when Dogara Dogara emerged as so the the, 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 the the opposition can decide to work for someone who is against the interest of of of, of the party that has the the majority, whether simple majority, because the APC does not even have super majority, in order to maintain the independence of the legislature. But what we have seen over time is the executive trying to control what happens in the legislature. And I think that is the battle for the independence of the legislature beyond the selfish interest of those aspiring to for these offices. Beyond that, because if you ask me, I'll ask you all of these gladiators that are parading themselves, to, to be the speaker or to be the Senate president. Mm. What have they done since they've been in the National Assembly? That and is, a very, that is a very like, valid question. <laughs> uh, I've asked you this. What has the speakership of Bajabia Mila done for Lagos State as a whole? What has the speakership done for Lagos State? And let me talk about the senatorial district. What has the speakership of Bajabia Mila done for Lagos, 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 Lagos Central as a whole? What has it done? We has not... Or for the southwest, because he got the speakership on the basis of the fact that the speakership was was zoned to the southwest. And I want anybody to point to me the impact of Bajabia Mila in Obu State, the impact of Bajabia Mila in, in Ekiti State, the impact of Bajabia Mila in Oshu State, the impact of, I'm not too sure he even visited those states. So when these people parade themselves on the basis of zoning that they want this thing to be zoned to their geopolitical zone. It is not for the interest of the people. It's mm -mm. For, just for their own selfish interest. Exactly. Because I ask people this. But Abia Amila, for example, I'm from Lagos State, and that's why I'm being passionate. I'm talking about, but Abia Amila, for example, has been a minority leader 
in the he was minority leader in the seventh assembly he was majority leader in the eighth assembly is the speaker in the ninth in the ninth assembly so there are two federal constituencies in Tulare, and there are 24 federal constituencies in in lagos anybody should tell me what he has done he has not done anything for my own constituency i know i know that for sure so when people talk about this just about their selfish interest and i love this michael jackson song all i want to say is they don't care about us and that's why they want to give themselves <laughs> Uh, that's why they could allocate to themselves and 51 million as hardship allowance. When, when you and I are going through hardship, the, you could look at how hot the weather is. There's no light. I don't have light. That's why you can't see my face. That's why you're only seeing, you can only hear my voice. So, and yet, in their, they, are, they, are, they are giving themselves hardship allowance. Yeah, well, um, hardship allowance, they're collecting on behalf of the people they are superintending over. <laughs> They have a newspaper allowance, and I don't know how many of them buy newspapers nowadays when they have their tabs and all that, and given free airtime by some uh, uh, service providers and all that. But um, that story for another day. Another worrisome thing on the headlines is the fact that uh, underutilization debts uh, have hobbled the $4.12 billion rail rehabilitation project, especially now that... Uh, they're milling the, the, the possibility of removing subsidy and talking about buying buses, talking about giving 5,000 to the people to ameliorate the sufferings that they are going to suffer. That's the hardship allowance for the people, 5,000 for everybody, 50 million households out of uh, the 200 million people that are in Nigeria. They're targeting 80 million people or 50 million households. Now, the real project that could have been one of those things that will aid people in movement from one point to the other is being uh, truncated by the fact that there's too much debt and then underutilization. So I'd like to have your comments on that. The now, real project. You, when they, you see, these people, they don't change. Don't forget that when um, Abacha removed his own subsidy, uh, we have the Petroleum Trust Fund. Mm. And the Petroleum Trust Fund, which was headed by the current president, and I remember when the current president was was um, in opposition. He said, if any government says they are paying subsidy, they are just deceiving Nigerians, that nobody is paying subsidy. However, they have paid more subsidy under the administration that they've ever paid. And they, they are, they are, there is no justification. Some of us have had this, that there are, they are no just because there are no provisions, because over time, until recently, there were no provisions for petroleum subsidy. Because the claim, when it was hiked, they claimed that they are no longer paying petroleum subsidy. And the question was asked, where is the money being used for payment of petroleum subsidy coming from is in the annual appropriation bill, and we said it was an impeachable offense. So when you look at their pattern and their style, it's the same. What did they do under Abacha then? They bought buses, and they said they would buy buses, they would give people some relief package and the rest of it. Look, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, there is a particular uh, word in, in, in our local parlance, it's called abracadabra, and then, you know, Rexy, and then and whiskey, whiskey that a remiss of a song by Reski, uh, Abacadabra. So, what we see, the more you look, the less you see. Uh, it's, it's just the situation when it comes to the oil and gas sector. And it's situated that with the story which you have heard with respect to Angola overtaking Nigeria because our oil output has become low, record low, and Angola is the leading oil exporting country in Africa. That should be a shame. It should, be, it should be, it should be, it should be, it should be something that anyone and anyone in the oil and gas sector, attending the oil and gas sector, should know that it's a failure. I can say this for a fact: the president has failed because the president is the minister of petroleum and resources for eight years. Is patent over that over, over over that ministry, and the minister of state for that ministry resigned to contest for the APC. Uh, gubernatorial ticket of Bayesa State, and as we speak, is the APC gubernatorial candidate for Bayesa State. So that ministry has a minister that has the every other ministry reporting to him, and it has no junior minister as as we speak uh, 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 um, 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 presently. So when how uh, where did they get the data? How did they come about the data of the 50 million Nigerians? That's the question. You know. If you situate that with the relief package during the COVID. Or you situate that with trade that money, you just think that probably some people are cashing out on 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 on, on innocent 
or innocent Nigeria because there is no there is no iota of accountability on it. Now, all of these programs they have done over time. If you break the word accountability into two, you have if you break the word accountable into two, you have account and table. Now they have not brought the accounts of what they have done in the past to table to the table before we talk about giving them the opportunity to go ahead and spend another money. So uh, I, I just I just can't comprehend and I just can't understand because they think okay you know what and it's just because of the critical sector the civil society and the media itself does not throw spotlight on this. I can't imagine someone like Chief Ganifai may be alive today. I know the various class suit that would have been instituted oh, yes. against various government at various levels with respect to recklessness. Nigeria does miss with respect to... Eh? I said Nigeria does miss with res Chief Ganifai on me. Now that you've mentioned him, you're with respect, me With respect Nigeria. to financial recklessness and lack of accountability, transparency, and probity on behalf of those who have given the responsibility to manage our public accounts. Say, they will just come and bandy that figure. Just look at the various amount of money, the various kind of projects in the twilight of an administration, an administration that is going in less than two weeks, and in, in less than, yeah, in, 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 about, in about three weeks' time, uh, is now awarding different types of projects. 3.4 billion as, as consultancy fee, for to construct a rail, to construct a runway, the money for consultancy itself is able to build runway as many runway as possible. So you 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 wonder it is are we cost? Is something really is something really is something really wrong somewhere? Okay, let's let's move from that to the case of. Um, Kano, yeah, Nam Namdi Kano. The Supreme Court adjourns Namdi Kano's case to September 14. This keeps happening time and time again, even after the court, uh, first of all, uh, talked about releasing him, and the federal government did not obey that law. Now they're back to court and they're adjourning this case until now. It is September 14. We do not know what the outcome is going to be. I would like your comment on that. Justice delayed is justice denied. And why can the Supreme Court ensure that it was this present administration that abducted Namde Kadu Kenya was an abduction? And it was this administration that took Namde Kadu to court. But somehow, it will be the incoming administration that will inherit the baggage created by this current administration. I think that the Supreme Court should have been able to expedite action on this matter and dispense with the case so that justice will be seen to have been done and must have been done. If there is a need for him to go to jail for his activity, you send him to jail. If there is any need for you to send him free, you, 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 you discharge him and you acquit him. You see, when you delay from now, this is May to September. Uh, for me, when I had that, I, I, was, I, was, I was saying, what's in the matter? You do you look at you dispense the matter as quickly as possible to expedite action on the matter. And um, as far as I'm concerned, the, it's, it's just one way of this present administration trying to ensure that the incoming administration inherit its packages. Because the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice has a role to play in this to ensure that okay, if they have enough evidence to prosecute this guy to 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 to, to convict him, they go ahead with it. Other than delaying it, and one court has will release him, the other court is saying, and then you are foot dragging on the matter. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's just Nam Dekano, it could be anybody, because justice delay is justice denied. Issues of this nature should be action, should be expedited on it, and then justice must be seen to have been Thank done. You. That's Mr. my take on that. Johnson. Thank you so much for your time. Mr. Jide Johnson is Senior Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Lagos. Thank you so much for your time and insight on this very important topic. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah. Uh, thank God it's Friday. Make thank sure God you have a Friday. drink and then you relax to recharge yourself for Monday. What started, you know. Thank you have for that nice advice. Weekend. You, you too, too. You too. Right. Have a nice weekend. You're still watching the Friday Frenzy edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll be back in a minute to take our very first topic. Hot topic it is. Stay with us. <laughs>